Look at this tree right here. A lot of oak trees like this one, well, they were derooted. A lot of the limbs were ripped in half. Let me actually bring you to this house right behind me over here, right to the side. We're right next to the apartment complex, and you can actually hear SWAT doing call outs, trying to get this man to come out. Suspect was successfully able to get into. As you can see, he was able to pry this door open, chipping off the wood. This branch is encased in the ice. It's about a little under half an inch. One person was found dead after a call came in at around 3.20 this morning. Police just confirmed that detectives have arrived. The difference these light fixtures make, however, on this side and on this pathway, if we just turn off our lights, the ice is finally melting. Trees aren't falling, so crews have been able to get more work. We're in Shoal Creek. While cleanup efforts are underway, you can see some single-use plastics right there. I finally made a goat friend because all of them were kind of running away from me. City leaders have been giving us an update on restoration efforts after the winter storm. Now, I want to go over a few things that were said. All right, is everybody ready to walk? There were dozens of people. It's about a half a mile there, half a mile back. And like Carrie Lou Bell always remembering the good things about their loved ones. He was a certified personal trainer in, in excellent shape. He did not look 44. Their hearts burdened. <laughs> as they think of the children, cousins, and friends who lost their life to fentanyl. This is my daughter, Jessica. She just passed last month. Cameron. He was 19. Tucker Rowe, he died September 23rd of 2021. Let's let everybody know why we're here today. On Sunday, Bell and dozens of other people mourned in a different way. We have a lot of parents here that are here to walk for their children and uh, their families and friends. Becky Stewart, who helped organize the event, hopes to spread the word about the danger of this opioid. The mass production of it is unreal. It's super, super cheap and highly addictive. And our son's deaths were nothing more than, than doing the business for these dealers. My baby. Stewart says it didn't take much for them to lose their lives. He all three of our sons were alone. They all took one pill that ended their lives. One, one, one pill. pill. Let that sink in, one pill. It is so hot, my face is red, I know, <laughs> but it's worth it. Belle will continue to share her son's story. It will be one year on Tuesday, and um, it doesn't seem like a year, it seems like yesterday. A man so loved. He was an awesome guy. She only hopes to continue making him proud. My son would be proud, I walked a mile today. In Austin. That doesn't happen very often. I'm Pamela Cohn. Quaint little home in the heart of East Austin. We planted everything that you see here, so it was pretty much bare dirt when we moved in, so. A place not too big, but just right for Brad Wilson and his wife. We wanted to go someplace that um, still had, you know, some diversity to it. And that's exactly what they found. I don't know the history, if you know the history of this neighborhood, but that it was built as um, a, you know, black, uh, black property owner, you know, neighborhood. Wilson's home was worth just over $100,000 when they bought it in 2009. Now it's going for about three times more. 400000 seems to be, you know, the usual asking price. But a new report finds if Wilson were to sell his home, because it's in a community with a large number of Latinos and Blacks, it likely won't be valued as high when compared to a neighborhood with a white majority population. A home in Austin that's in a white neighborhood holding everything at its means is almost $900,000, while a home in a community of color is only $300,000. Junia Howell, co-author of the study, says they compared homes with similar floor plans, looked at access to transportation, the number of good schools and supermarkets in the area, and despite their similarities, both Latinx and black neighborhoods are severely devalued compared to their white counterparts. Howell says these disparities worsened in 2020. That values in white neighborhoods spike while those in communities of color kind of stay constant or plateaued. In 2013, the average difference between homes in white neighborhoods and communities of color was about $300,000. Last year, according to the study, the difference increased to $500,000. There's not just one solution for a decades-long problem and a problem that is this massive. 
In the meantime, this isn't something Wilson has to worry about. My partner and I agree on this that, you know, there's really no point in selling a house. He'll continue to enjoy his quiet life and tend to the small house he's made a home. In East Austin, I'm Pamela Cohn. So I just kind of empty this out. Another day, a different home. It takes you um, anywhere from uh, 20 minutes to 40 minutes to finish a pool, just depending on the how dirty it is. For Jonathan Rodriguez with Blue Trident Pools, these cleanings may not seem too taxing until you add high temperatures to the equation. Bit best thing to do is just, you know, just kind of hydrate yourself while you're out here. Jumping in can also sound tempting, but when that's not an option, the more shade, the better it is, you know, and the easier it is on the heat. And he'll need to keep finding ways to stay cool because a new report by First Street Foundation predicts feels like temperatures in most Texas counties will reach 125 degrees at least once a year in the next 30 years. So you have almost this bowl in the middle of the country, this low elevation, really high humidity relative to the rest of the country. And if temperatures reach those dangerous levels. And so those are days in which uh, dehydration happens, uh, heat cramps, heat stroke. In the most severe cases, uh, mortality can happen from those types of heat waves and prolonged exposure. There's always going to be definitely some times when you feel like that, you know, um, you know, kind of a little bit dizzy. And In the extreme heat, there's not much Rodriguez can do. Carry on more water, you know. But deal with it. In Austin, I'm Pamela Combe.